Hey guys, this is Danny with Pwn CNC, and I'm here to talk about a new thing that I'm playing around with. Um, hope you guys like it. This is a quick preview. This is still a month or so off. I've got to do a lot of testing on this one. Um, really don't like, um, well, it's not that I don't like it, but there are certain things that, that I'm not happy with when it comes to V5. Um, that's the uh, spindle mounted boot. So right here, you're looking at V7. Um, V7, just like V5, has got a removable brush track, um, spindle mounted, um, it, it has the attachments and all that stuff, and I'll show you this um, here, well, I'll show you it now. <laughs> so, the uh, brush track, um, I've actually been able to get away with four uh, magnets because of a little rim that I have running around, um, which wraps around this base acrylic plate. Um, the spindle mount, the, the collar that mounts around the spindle is going to be sized for the router. I'm starting out um, with all of my testing, which is with the most common size, which is the um, 65 millimeter, the, either the carbide router or uh, Makita, or even my own um, uh, water-cooled uh, 65 millimeter spindle. So this will basically mounts right on here. Let me remove my hose here and all with one handle, one handle mount. Um, there's a long screw here on the right side um, with of course, and of course this is a per early prototype. So I've got several, uh, you know, I've got four magnets here. I was testing out various versions. Four is way too strong. It, took, it, took, it takes a lot of force to get that pop off. Um, so I'm reducing it down. I'm testing out two now. Um, I may go to three just so that I can get some, um, some good strength there. But essentially, it's one handle design. Pop it on, tighten it down, and it's not going anywhere. Um, if you loosen up the handle, you can actually raise it up or down by almost um, a full inch and a half. So the collar itself is about, what, 42 millimeters, I believe. Um, and then, of course, you add in the, uh, the extra acrylic here and we're talking a good variable. Now the requirement, this is important, the requirement here is you really need that space on, your, on the main body of your spindle. If you notice here, I've got my router sunk all the way down into the router mount, and I have a couple of inches here which I can uh, mount a, brack, mount a uh, dust boot to. Not every router mount has that option, um, not every machine um, comes with their default uh, router mount that way. But I do know that Millwright um, Carbide 3D, even, even their old ones and their new ones, uh, this is the newest version, their older version, um, just a really short one inch uh, thick router mount, as well as the CNC for newbies. And yeah, even the Onefinity has got enough room down here below. Um, and let's see, real quick at the... Uh, X-Carve, of course the X-Carve, I've got the uh, uh, DeWalt router on there, so I haven't looked at that, but looking at it, there's enough sticking out at the bottom um, of the DeWalt that you can access it. Now, um, I decided not to account for any of the buttons, right? Because I wanted this super easy to put on and off. By doing that, you could just get the whole router, the whole boot out of the way, do all your tool changing and all that, come back and put it back on. Another benefit is if you look on the right side, um, or at least on, on the uh, carbide router and, and even the Makita and some of the others, there's actually measuring over here on the right. So all you gotta do is just mount your, uh, mount your boot up, measure it up to the, uh, to the height where you want it to go, and use that as a measuring device for where to mount your boot. Right. Yep. Now, the uh, brush track, of course, you got the uh, boot on there. It comes, it will come standard with my mag mount, uh, my mag lock mount system, where it's two and a half inches. Um, I am working on a four inch. Just be patient with me. Um, it will also have a mag lock uh, design to it, but essentially that mag lock um, pops right in there. I'm working. I'm. I'm Thinking I'm going to redesign this piece right here. I really didn't like how long it took to glue to super glue that in, and I don't know how strong that super glue is going to be. So I will probably adjust it where this collar basically snaps right in, and there's a plastic lip on the bottom, right? Now, 
onto the uh, onto the track, uh, the brush track. So the brush track, it is 360, it is oblong. Um, I did take into account, there are several uh, reports that um, due to strong um, extraction systems, um, and I tested this at full speed and all that, is this brush track has got a couple of nice features um, that previous boots don't, which may actually start getting incorporated in once I get this out the door. Um, in this case, there is a lip which sits gently into the uh, into the acrylic part, but it's really hard to tell. But if you look here, there's actually a sweep. So I've swept it out. So I pulled those brushes out away from the in, from the main intake. So it's out further, and on the inside of the plastic, I put a little swoop so that whenever the air comes in, the idea is it'll swoop up into the into the uh, into your extraction into your hose, rather than pulling against the brushes there nearest the uh, the boot. Now, I've gone through a couple of versions of this track, and that little sweep right there does actually work really well. The previous one, what I do is I put my uh, extractor on at full speed um, and basically cover up the entire intake, right? Just like it was sitting on stock. And the I basically did, I printed, I redesigned this uh, track a couple of times so that it would basically prevent all the brushes from squeezing in like this, right? So whenever I did that. So that was the main test. Put it up there, close up that gap, um, watch what the brushes do. They do sweep in just a tiny bit, but nowhere near as much as my first couple of prototypes. Now, once you've got your boot on there, um, and of course you've got your bit, you will have to deal with your bit. The assumption is your router will be all the way up or up out of the way so that you can then bump this, uh, get this underneath your bit and then bring it right up, snaps right into place. The track um, keeps a nice lip. It'll help with any lateral movement of the track. And then you can pop it off just by pulling down on both sides. I may actually put some uh, tabs or something over here. I have, I'm still debating that one. Again, it is a month off. So, um, but even with, two, even with four magnets on here, um, that is a really strong pull. So I'm very happy with all of that. But I wanted to give you an idea of um, running through a test, initializing my machine. This is the Shipoko Pro, um, and kind of give you an idea of what the workflow looks like. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and set my brush track aside, pop my boot off, just set it there. Um, of course, here's my, uh, my Fez tool. It has, and this is also going to be introduced at the same time. Well, Okay, it's not meant to come apart, but inside there is my standard hose adapter. So if you've got whatever hose adapter you have, the squared off circle hose adapter, I've got a maglock connector for you. Um, there's a little piece there that the that your adapter snaps right into, converts it right into a maglock adapter. Then you can use it for your uh, whatever system you have. That way you can keep them nice, nice and cheap. If you want to change your adapters, you can just change out that squared. Uh, change your hose adapter, pop it into the other maglock um, piece. Yeah. Get into details more later. But I have my machine here, and I am going to turn it on, and I'm going to connect to my cutter, and I'm going to initialize the machine. Now you'll notice I've got my brackets on here, and one little note, if you've got the arms, um, the arms literally bump right up against the, uh, the extrusion here. Don't be alarmed, it should not break it, um, but it should home just like normal. There's no um, switch uh, changing or anything like that. So I've got my machine, it's asking for a bit or a tool. I'm gonna to go ahead and throw in, we're gonna do a test here, and I'm going to throw in, what do I wanna throw in? I'm gonna throw in, this guy, what is this guy? This is a 1 8 inch. Um, it's one of the tiny bits, so we'll see how that does, how well that does um, with the adjusting and all that. And 
Uh, give me a second, I'm going to pause you and I'm going to find my, my 1 8 inch bit collar. Co so, all right, so I am going to use my original probe, my little piece here. All right, we are good to go. Now, it's time to get our boot ready. So, we've got it probed, we've got it ready to go. Make sure my probe doesn't trigger when I'm when I'm cutting and all that. I'm gonna show all this wire. Be nice if they had a wireless touch probe, wouldn't it? That would be awesome. How about somebody work on that? <laughs> all right, let's see. Uh, so I have got my system all in place. I've got my stock already in place. Um, this is just half inch MDF. I'm gonna take my um, my boot here. I'm going to raise it up all the way, and if I need to, I can always tighten it just by pulling this off, twisting it a little, hold, holding the screw back here in place, and then I can tighten down the uh, tighten down the boot. It's just a standard cam cam lock here. So, got my boot on, brush track on, got my hose. This is the ultimate hose clamp. Um, I've got the one, one and a half inch vertical, and I think this is what the uh, XL, so I can go from the uh, stepper motor all the way out as far as I can go, so I can come straight down with it. So the way this works is drops right into place. Um, three of the magnets oppose, three of the magnets attract, so all you gotta do to pushes itself away and then just twist it. And then all six magnets will engage and hold on to your piece. Okay, so got everything all ready. Got my file on there, got all that. I did have to readjust my bit a little bit. Um, so one thing to note, the boot itself with the brushes is a full four and a half inches. So you have to ensure that the bottom of your router mount and the bottom of your bit is at or or above that value so that you can have some adjustability. Otherwise you need to use shorter brushes. And I do have shorter brushes um, and I am uh, calculating to see if I can get, see if I can include that or at least provide another brush track um, with shorter brushes so that you can make that adjustment even whenever this uh, setup doesn't quite work. I'm also considering reducing the size of this collar, um, but we'll see. We'll see how it works. This is a great test um, to run that through. Again, I've got my mag lock on there. I've got my uh, boot on there, or my fez tool. I've set it to the highest setting so we can see and, and kind of keep a close eye on, on the suction and all that stuff. This is just MDF. I'm only going in like a, a quarter inch, so it's not that deep. Um, and yeah, of course I got my boot all the way up because if I boot put the boot all the way up, my particular tiny little bit there um, sticks out uh, just enough where it's touching the bottom of these brushes here. So um, the brushes will squeeze just a little bit, but it shouldn't be too terrible since I'm not going in too deep. But that is something to keep in mind whenever you're choosing any sort of boot. Now we're going to get started. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play. Um, I'll fast forward the video so you guys don't have to endure the noise. <laughs> The uh, cut just finished. You saw how clean that turned out. I'm very happy with the way this boot is turning out. Um, if you uh, got any questions or comments, be sure to uh, add them below. And of course, this is a uh, dust boot version seven. <laughs> um, version six. Uh, I mean, this is lucky number seven, right? Come on. So um, if you like that, be sure to. Uh, Again, let me know, and remember, don't just own your CNC, dominate it.